Proudly, we hail. City where the American stage begins, here's another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this story, as proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The Captain and the Kid. This is the story of a young man who had something he wanted to prove to the world, but most of all, to prove to himself. As proudly we hail the United States Air Force, our first act curtain will rise in just one moment. Here's important news for all ex-servicemen. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. Right now, the Air Force needs men who are experienced in critical skills. Skills required to keep America's air defense strong. If you have training in these skills, then the Air Force wants you. And they'll put you right on the job. So for full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter right away. Ask them for the folder for prior servicemen. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Out of all the days a person lives in a lifetime, how many does he remember? Which are the ones that really count? I remember a special day that could have been just another routine day. I was sitting before a radar scope in a GCA van on an Air Force base in Germany. My team chief and non-commissioned officer in charge, Sergeant Miller, and I had just vectored the plane into the field, and there was nothing doing. But to me already, it was a little more than that for a few minutes before. Somebody coming, Tom? Yeah, that's Blake, Sergeant Miller. What do you want? Not trying to be relieved yet. What's up, Blake? Hiya, Tom. I got something for you. For me? Yep. Here you are, by order of the squadron commander, and his best wishes for a happy birthday. A birthday cake? Well, what do you know? Hell, yeah, the mess sergeant made it. Oh, gosh, what? That's swell. But how come? Something new. Major Jenkins wants every man from now on to get a cake. On his birthday. Well, <laughs> congratulations, Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Sergeant. Come on, fellas, have a piece. What do you think I'm hanging around for? <laughs> 20, 21 candles. 21 years old, eh? Well, Tom, you are, as of today, a man. I had a lot of respect for Sergeant Miller, but I was afraid he was off his glide path. It takes a lot more than 21 candles to prove that one is a man. And if there's anyone who wants to know that, it's me. It's something I'd learned especially within the past two years. Two years. I remember that day the letter came to our house. I've been out of high school about a year then and was holding out a job as a grocery clerk. My father and I lived alone. And that morning, I was first one up. Mmm. Yeah, that bacon smells good, Tom. Yeah. You might as well sit down, Dad. I've got breakfast about ready. Okay. Mailing it? Uh-huh. There's a letter for you from Dottie. Yeah, it's about time. Hadn't had one for a while. I guess she's got so much to do there in New York, she doesn't get the time. Well, I'll be. She's coming home on Sunday for one day. And she's bringing along her fiancé. Fiancé? You mean she's getting married? Yes, Kennedy's his name. Captain in the Air Force. She wants us to meet him before they get married. Well, she sure doesn't waste any... Kennedy? Captain Jim Kennedy? Yes, what's the matter? You know him? Know him? Well, who doesn't? I mean, who hasn't heard of him? He's just about the top fighter pilot in Korea, that's all. Boy, I've certainly got to hand it to my sister. Nothing but the best for her. I could hardly wait for that Sunday to arrive, for I was not only excited that our family would soon have a real hero in it, but I had something I wanted to talk to him about, something that occupied my thoughts for the past year. But ours is a small town. Word gets around fast there. After Dottie and the captain arrived, our house was filled all day long with visitors, so I didn't have the chance to talk to him much. Until my father took us out to a restaurant for supper. Well, Jim, I haven't had an opportunity to say it before, but I'll be mighty glad to call you my son-in-law. Thank you, sir. I hope I'll be able to make Dottie happy. 
My, my, it's so formal. <laughs> yeah, my daughter always was one for bringing surprises. <laughs> well, now, tell us about your plans when you're getting married. A month from today. And, Dad, there's a very good chance you might get assigned to a base not far from here. Fine, fine. So uh, maybe we'll get an opportunity to visit quite often. I'd like to get to know you and, and Dottie's kid brother here a little better. <laughs> Say, how old are you, anyway? Uh, 19. 19? Well, you surely don't look it. That's because he's got a turned-up nose. <laughs> <laughs> but no matter how old he gets, he'll, he'll still always be my kid brother. And my kid brother-in-law, right? Uh-huh, I guess so. If they say, Captain, I, I'd like to talk to you. Well, sure, kid. Anytime. Oh, not now, Jim. We've got to be at Betty's house in ten minutes. we better go. Maybe later, huh, Tom? Yeah, oh, okay. See ya. See you later, Mr. Phillips. So long, kid. It was like a dentist drill slipping and hitting a nurse. Captain Candy was everything I'd imagined him to be. Tall and lean with the air of a man who knew his business. There was only one defect, and to me at that time, it was a big one. Nice to have met you, kid. I'll be seeing you, kid. 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 As I lay in bed kid. that night, it, it kept kid. going over and kid. over in my mind. Kid. I wasn't a kid anymore. I was 19 years old and sick of working in a grocery store. I'd get me three pounds of bananas, kid. Make it two dozen eggs, kid. Kid, kid. Well, by the time I fell asleep, I'd come to a decision. So you, uh, want to enlist in the Air Force? Yes, sir. You know, I've I talked to you about it before. Yes, but what made you finally decide? Oh, but I suppose I don't have to ask. Captain, right? Yeah. Not that I spoke to him about it. I, I didn't have a chance. I understand, sir. He's a fine chap. He sure is. But that's not the only reason. I just don't see myself getting anywhere putting cans on a shelf. Sure. If it's what you want, go ahead and join up. Just remember this. Wherever you go or whatever you do, do your best. Sign here, Phillips. Okay, now report here Thursday at 1 p.m. That'll be at Samson Air Force Base for five. Good luck. Samson. Basic training. 11 weeks from dawn to dusk. Medical and dental examinations. Issue of uniforms. Drill. Learning Air Force regulations. Losing weight or gaining it, whatever is needed to make you physically trim. Then, finally, 14 aptitude tests, followed by career counseling interviews. Your tests show you quick thinking, intelligent, got steady nerves, good vocabulary. You could fit many jobs in the Air Force, but men like you are needed. Maybe AACS, Airways and Air Communication System. It wasn't easy. We learned air traffic regulations, weather, radar fundamentals, air traffic control procedures, theory of flight. Radar scope operation, with many periods of actual operators' practice. During this, you'll be judged on scope alignment phraseology, use of computers, handling aircraft, and courtesy to the pilot. Okay, Philip, you're next. Sitting on the stool before the radar set, watching the sweeps of my azimuth and elevation scope, giving information by radio to a pilot in his plane. Well, what can I say except that it beats selling bananas all hollow. After 18 weeks of intensive training, we were graduated and got our next assignment. Esterhausen, Germany. Nice trip overseas. But you got a 15-day leave coming, Philip. Going home? Yes, Sergeant. But I'm going to stop somewhere else first. Tom! <laughs> oh, this is a surprise. Hiya, Daddy. I have a 15-day leave, but oh. I'd stop by on my way home to say hello. Oh, I'm glad you did. Oh, Jim will be home in a few minutes. Oh, how's he doing? Fine. Just fine. Now, let me look at you. Well, have you grown a what? You look so tall. <laughs> no, I just standing straighter, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. You know, when I saw you there in the doorway in your blue uniform, you looked so wonderful that if I'd been an airman, I'd have saluted you. Dottie may have been a little over enthusiastic, but I have to admit that I I felt kind of good too. I'd come a long way the seven months I've been in the Air Force. I was by now a qualified GCA operator. I did stand straight when I wore that blue uniform, but I had plenty of reason to do so. And I was hoping Captain Jim would maybe look at me with different eyes, too. But I guess I was hoping a little too much. It's sure good to see you again. You're looking great, kid. Uh, thanks, Captain Jim. For your GCA, hmm? Well, kid, if you don't know it already, 
You're in one of the greatest outfits in the Air Force. And I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> Many of the time they helped to bring me down out of the soup. They did a great job in Korea, but where I really learned to appreciate them was during the Berlin airlift. Why, I remember once, kid... Looking back now, I see that I was a self-centered dope. But to hear the man I admired so much still refer to me as kid, despite the fact that I was now a fellow airman, sort of got me. Otherwise, my visit was a pleasant one. But when I left, I vowed to myself that one day he'd stop calling me kid. Goodbye, Tom. Say hello to Dad for us. So long, kid. If uh, you ever get to Lansfield, say hello to everybody for me. My father was glad to see me when I got home and just as proud of me as Dottie had been. The days went fast. And before I realized it, I was on a plane flying toward my first assignment. Esterhausen Air Force Base, Germany. Within 24 hours, I was reporting to the non-commissioned officer in charge, GCA section of the 618th AACS Squadron, Master Sergeant Miller. Career man, 11 years in the service. A man who knew what he was doing, where he was going, and how he was going to get there. But a man who could take the time to make a newcomer feel right at home. Yes, our GCA section is like a family here, Tom. I know you're going to fit right in. I hope so, Sergeant. There's one thing I'd like you to remember, though, and that is that our unit has a reputation among the pilots of this whole continent. They know when they come in here that they've got an outfit they can depend on 100%. So proud of that reputation. I guess you have a right to, Sergeant. And you will, too. Now, you're fresh out of school, right? Yes. Okay, so I'll assign you to a team with an experienced man as your partner and team chief. Airman First Class Joe Reynolds. You'll report out to the van at 0800 hours tomorrow morning. Glad to have you, Philip. Meet Johnson. Hi, Philip. Hi. Uh, you'll replace Johnson after you get used to our setup here. Uh, normally, we're supposed to have three man teams, but it seems there aren't enough GCA men in the Air Force to go around. Hey, come on, grab a stool. I'll familiarize you with the local terrain feature. Air traffic control uses the same procedures everywhere. But there are features individual to each station, such as emergency procedures, local navigational aids, and, of course, the layouts of the runways, taxiways, and so forth. I spent the next week soaking these things into my head, getting myself used to the feel of the equipment I had to work with. I want to keep the elevation gain controlled just so the center of the aircraft target is illuminated and ride down the gain as the aircraft nears touchdown. We'll try it with this blip. Uh, how's this, Joe? Okay. Oh, good, good. See, otherwise your target's going to bloom on you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Well, Phillips, you've done pretty well as traffic director. You want to try a final controller position? Final controller position. What you might call the payoff in GCA. The final controller is sitting before his precise radar scope with guidelines marking the glide path to the runway. All you have to do is to keep the little greenish-white blip moving down those two lines. You won't have any trouble. Just follow SOP. SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. Everything we do and say is written down for us in black and white and drilled into our heads until it becomes a part of us. I was perfectly calm and ready for anything. Except the one thing that did happen when Joe Reynolds picked up the phone and called Squadron Headquarters. Hello, Sergeant Miller. Reynolds here. <laughs> Fine. I just wanted to let you know that I put the kid on final control. Maybe if it hadn't been that this was my first GCA run in an operating unit and that I was a little more tense than I realized, I might have disregarded what Reynolds called me. But it hit me especially hard because I wasn't expecting it. Just then a call came through for an approach landing assist, one that turned out to be a little different than I expected. You are listening to the proudly we held production of The Captain and the Kid, and we will return for our second act in just one moment. Are you a service veteran with a service game skill that's just going to waste? If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, you can put that experience to work in the Air Force and do so at a higher grade and with higher pay than you may realize. For full details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Ask for the prior serviceman's folder. This folder will show you why. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This is Tower. We have a run for you, GCA. What frequency have you available? Channel 8, Tower. 
Why is it that some things happen at the worst possible time? I worked side by side with Joe Reynolds for months. He was okay, and we got along. But in all that time, why did he have to pick that particular moment to say what he did? He'd never done it before. Boy, it sure irritated me. Well, I put it out of my mind when the call came. In GCA, you have to. You've got enough to occupy you. I corrected the gain on the precision scope and waited until Joe brought the target, a B-26, into the traffic pattern to the point of letdown. White Horse Jack, distance from touchdown seven miles. Change to GCA final controller on Channel Hotel. One, three, four point one megacycles and stand by. Over. This is White Horse Jack. We'll call Channel Hotel out. White Horse Jack, this is Esterhausen, GCA final controller. Turn right, heading zero four zero. Maintain present altitude. How do you hear me? Over. This is White Horse Jack. We'll call. Right heading zero four zero. Receiving loud and clear. Over. Whatever nervousness I might have had vanished as I settled into my stool. But before I started my final approach at this. This is White Horse Jack. I have a simulated emergency. One engine out and feathered. This is simulated. A training flight emergency. And on my first try at final controlling. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Reynolds watching me for any signs of panic or nervousness. But I wasn't upset by the pilot's call. I knew the emergency procedures backwards and forwards. I repeat, this is simulated. Over. White Horse Jack, can you maintain your altitude? Over. This is White Horse Jack. Affirmative. Over. White Horse Jack will give you a gear check within three miles on final. Distance from touchdown, five and a half miles. Your heading of zero four zero is good. Twenty feet above glide path, down a little, turn right two degrees. You are over the end of the runway. Take over for landing. This is Esterhausen GCA final controller. Out. Touchdown. <laughs> you made it nice. Yeah. Well, you did okay, kid. Okay. That was nice. Can it? Huh? I said can it. What's eating you? Nothing. Oh, now come on, let's give, will you? There's not much room to turn around in here, and I don't want to have to rub elbows with a grudge. Should I do something to you, kid? Look, Reynolds, there's something I want to get straight with you. Stop calling me kid. My name is Airman Second Class Phillips, and that's the way I want to be referred to from now on. Get it? Yeah. Sure, I get it. That's the way you want it. Airman Second Class Phillips. That's the way. I realized that I'd been unjust with Reynolds, that he hadn't meant anything by calling me kid. It was just full pride. So the next morning at breakfast, uh, pass me the sugar, please, Joe. Sure. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, hey, Joe. There's something I want to say to you. Uh... Oh, by the way, Tom, your team chief Reynolds here is going to be transferred to another team. Yes, Sergeant? Yes, he'll be getting another partner. Me. You? Well, how come? The GCA section's losing some men I've got to fill in. <laughs> Back to the old salt mines, eh, Sarge? Yeah, but don't worry, I won't mind at all. No, sir. Sarge, is that the only reason you're teaming up with me? No, uh, sure, sure it is. Uh-huh. To say, uh, Tom, you wanted to talk to me about something? Yeah, yeah, I did. But not anymore. Not anymore. I was the kind of guy in those days that had jumped at the first conclusion I'd come to. Sergeant Miller seemed a little evasive to me, so I figured right away that Reynolds had asked for a transfer and that the sergeant had decided to check me firsthand to see if I was hard to get along with. As it turned out, I got along swell with Sergeant Miller, especially after one day when he found out something about me. And I learned something about myself. So you're Captain Jim Kennedy's brother-in-law. That's right, Sarge. You know him then, huh? No, him, man. I talked him down many times during the Berlin airlift. You did? Sure. He used to drop out the shack and thank us lots of times after the run. Say, how's he doing, anyway? 
According to my sister's letters, great. That's fine. Say hello to him in your next letter for me. I sure will, Sarge. Yes, you think of the day. Being NCO, I see has its good points, but there's nothing like sitting out here doing this. Sort of regret having to go back to my desk again. Going back? You mean you're not going to be working with me anymore? No, not right away. In a few weeks, things are straightened out now, and you'll be getting another partner again. Who? Joe Reynolds. Reynolds? Well, I don't get it. Guess what? Listen, Sarge, didn't Reynolds tell you I was hard to get along with? No, of course not. What? Didn't you take his place to uh, check me over? Well, I wanted to give you a check, all right. For a different reason. One of my team chiefs is going to be transferred in about a month, and I'll have to make a recommendation for someone to take his place. From what I've seen of you, from the scores of the airman proficiency test, you're trying to think that you have a chance to be it. Oh, that was it. Oh, what a wobblehead I am. Why, what for? Well, for something I did and didn't do. Sarge, it's, it's sure swell of you to rate me so high in your book. Being a, a team chief, I, I never expect anything like that. Yeah, that's the way it is in the ACS. Anyone who can do the job best gets it. Anyway, you're soon due for a new rating. Gosh, Sarge, I, I just don't know what to say. Oh, save it. You're only getting what you deserve. I wasn't so sure about that. But then Sergeant Miller was speaking only from a military point of view. I could hardly wait till my ship was over and I had a chance to get back to the barracks. Luckily, Joe Reynolds was there. Ah, look, Tom, you don't have to apologize. Uh, but now that I'm soon going to be working with you again, well, I'm sure glad there's nothing between us anymore. You know that, eh? Sergeant Miller told me a little while ago. He also said it might not be for long, that you'd probably move up the ladder. He did, huh? Yeah. And, well, all I can say is we team chiefs got to stick together. Now, come on. Let me treat you to a Coke. Bearing a grudge can be an awful burden, but you don't realize it until it's gone. Joe and I had a good time at the service club that night, listening to jazz records and watching TV, German style. When I got back to the barracks, I, I sat down and wrote a letter to my dad and my sister, letting him know the good news. And just today, this morning, I got a letter from Dottie with a postscript by Captain Jim. We're thrilled, Tom, to hear how well you did. Keep it up. Try to write a little more often. We always like to hear from you. Love, Dottie. P.S. Hi, kid. You're sure moving along fast. You better watch out or you'll be a general before you know it. Is hoping I'll see you soon. Yours, Jim. Well, now, it was a nice letter, but we're back to where the cake arrived. I noted the captain had still called me kid. Sure, I felt a jab when I read it, but it didn't bother me as much as it once had. And 21 candles on a birthday cake. Maybe it meant I was growing up at last. For I'd learned that what counted was what is inside of you, what you are, no matter which name people call you by. GCA. Yeah? Okay. Channel Baker. Tom, call from Log Roll CGI. They're vectoring a trench at F86D to us. He's low on fuel. There's just enough to make it here. I channelized to Channel Baker while our control tower brought the 86 dog into our flight pattern. I was on the precision scope acting as final controller so Sergeant Miller would vector him the approach lane. We had to be careful. All other aircraft had to be cleared from the area. We had to see to it that the pilot maneuvered as little as possible in order to conserve his precious fuel. Within minutes. Red Top Joe, this is Esterhausen Tower, cleared for GCA. Contact Esterhausen, GCA, on Channel 1, George, 136.80 megacycle. If you lose radio contact, revert to this frequency. Over. This is Red Top Joe, Wilco, Channel George, out. Esterhausen, GCA, this is Red Top Joe, out. Red Top Joe, this is Esther House in GCA. Turn right, heading 180 for identification. Over. I've been Sergeant Miller's teammate long enough to know exactly his manner of operating down to his last voice inflection. It was always the same, emergency or no, except now. For some reason, I had a feeling there was something bothering him. Maybe I was imagining things, but while he brought the plane closer, he glanced at me once in a while, as if he was expecting something. Get ready, Tom. I'm switching him to your channel. Right. Tom. Yes? Uh, that's okay. I'll tell you later. Red Top Joe, this is Esterhausen, GCA. I wondered what was eating him. But I had other things to think about then. The pilot was changing to my channel. Red Top Joe, this is Esterhausen, final controller. Turn left, heading 040. 
Maintain your present altitude. How do you hear me? Over. This is Red Top Joe. Wilco. Left, heading 040. Leaving you loud and clear. Over. He only had enough fuel for one run. There was no spot for a missed approach. All I had to do was to follow the book, as I had hundreds of times. Steady. Steady. Down the glide path. Closer. Closer. You are on the glide path half a mile to touchdown. Look ahead for a landing runway straight ahead. Quarter mile to touchdown. 20 feet above glide path. Down a little. You are over the end of the runway. Take over for landing. This is Esterhausen, GCA, final controller. Out. Well, it's minutes later. The last run is now history written down in our operating log. And an hour's in the potted memory. Hey, Sarge, uh, what did you want to tell me before? Uh, oh, I'll tell you in a minute. Hello? Yeah, Tower, what is it? Oh, he is. Sure, it's okay, right? Well, I guess I won't have to tell you anymore, Tom. The pilot of that ship is on his way up in the... And here he is now. Come in, Captain. I recognized your voice as soon as I heard it. Hello, Sergeant Miller. Good to see you again. Now, where's that brother-in-law of mine? Captain Jim! <laughs> How in the world... Very simple. The airport decided they could use me over here, so here I am. How are you? You're looking great. There isn't too much time. The captain has to get back to his base. Just time enough to exchange greetings and some information. Sorry I got her off like this, but uh, we'll get together again soon. When Dottie comes... Well, uh, nice seeing you, Sergeant Miller. Sure was, sir. Well, so long. Oh, uh, by the way, Tom, it was a good run. A good run. Bye. Say, did you hear what he called me? He called me Tom. What's so unusual about that? Plenty, Sergeant. Plenty. Come on, let's finish this case. A man is 21 only once in his life. If you're an ex-serviceman experienced in the critical skill needed to keep America's air defense strong, well, then you're in luck. The Career Incentive Act opens up new opportunities in the Air Force to veterans of all the armed forces. If you possess one of the skills the Air Force needs, you may qualify for the United States Air Force and in a grade that'll be a real pleasant surprise. For complete details, you write or visit your nearest Air Force recruiter. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this radio station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. And this is Dick Herbert speaking, inviting you to tune in to the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>